How is it going guys? Malkins here. We will be talking about devotions and some other mechanics as well in Grim Dawn so that like you'll be up to speed, especially if you're a new player in Grim Dawn, you'll be up to speed when we're talking about devotions uh, towards the midsection of the video as well. Uh, first thing that I should mention is that like you should probably watch the components for beginners if you're new to the game definitely in my channel and at the same time before starting this video that is uh, it will be linked on the top right right now and the second thing that's going to be linked right after that is going to be in fact uh, the conversions that I've recently put uh, that's going to be pretty useful as well before starting this it should definitely be really useful because it's going to be explaining you what the conversions are how they're working and at the same time what the flat numbers are doing in this game and how they're going to be apl applied to your character too that could definitely be useful uh, when it comes to you know meddling around with devotions in this game 100 percent from then on um i'll actually jump into like offensive ability and defensive ability a little bit how it exactly works in this game it's actually like very interesting compared to like other arpgs simply because like in this game you know every single character out there including your character itself and the enemies etc they have their like own offensive ability and their own defensive ability just like their resistances and armor rating and offensive and defensive ability is basically you know the hit rate and the crit rate of your character versus somebody else so you know very simply put it's on a scale you versus a zombie let's say his defensive ability and your offensive ability the higher this gap is the higher your hit chance and your higher your crit chance is going to be versus the zombie but instead of the zombie now you have your your versus like a boss or something and the boss's defensive ability is up here even though your offensive ability is still the same so your hit chance and crit chance is going to be drastically lower compared to the zombie that you were talking about you know fighting so from this point you know your character is supposed to be balanced around you know destroying this boss not necessarily the zombie you know the peasant at the start of the game so therefore your character is going to be not like this it, it's supposed to be more like this versus you know the peasants thanks to this interesting system and thanks to also this you know when you are playing a really strong character that is capable of like you know destroying heroes and maybe even you know kind of destroying the bosses at the end game you will be absolutely demolishing that is the the the, the peasants of the game and the, you know because because you will be that much more stronger when it comes to like crit chance and crit damage versus those other type of creatures um so this is how literally how the defensive and the offensive ability works the disparency in between these things is also bringing you a little bit of crit damage but you can scale the crit damage as, as like a, another stat as well you know globally um I, I think the crit damage that you gain from like offensive ability difference between the defensive ability of the monsters is also having a hard cap as well i don't necessarily know how to reach this not didn't really check it out all that much myself but i do know that like a couple of years back i checked it out and there was like a hard cap that you are able to re receive when it comes to the crit damage that you can achieve from offensive ability um excuse me this being said the next thing that we will jump into is going to be the attributes in the game uh my attributes video actually on youtube is a little bit dated uh because like they're a little bit more valuable now the cutting and the spirit very simply put the, the way that i am you know prioritizing them is like physique over cunning and then over spirit while leveling i usually tend to still give literally everything into physique you guys um other than perhaps like a little bit of spirit or maybe a little bit of cunning simply because like these two are just just for me to be able to like you know wear the accessory that's usually the spirit or for me to be able to like hold this pistol in my hands or the dagger that's usually the cunning so if i'm able to like wear my equipment then it's usually physique that's that i'm giving into during leveling but at the end game though when i reach like level 100 and i set my character up and i'm like you know optimizing my character i usually look into look into my attributes one more time what i do from there is that like um it's it's important to understand what they give so cunning is giving you offensive ability and health Spirit is basically giving you a little bit of like magical kind of things, you know, magic damage and the duration damage kind of thing. And on top of that, it gives you a little bit of HP as well. So this is like, if I'm not mistaken, per one cunning, which, you know, every time you click, you're gaining about like eight or something, you're going to be gaining eight HP. The same thing can be said for this guy, the spirit as well. Uh, but for the physique, it's actually two and a half uh, per physique. So two and a half times eight is going to be what you're going to be getting. That's like... um what is that that's like 20 or something per click i suppose 20 hp it's exactly 20 hp if you look at groom tools as well over there <laughs> i didn't really need to like calculate it i suppose so physique is also giving you 
um, defensive ability as well. So at the end game, as I was saying, um, I would need to check out my defensive ability. I am usually comfortable about like 2.7k of defensive ability. So 2,700 defensive ability, I'm usually where I'm comfortable at, uh, at level 100. A little bit more definitely helps but like in my opinion above like 2.8k is kind of an overkill unless like you're fighting something like the ravager and kalagadra every single day or something or you're pushing you know uh gladiator 170 every single day with this character so for for the content that i usually do about like 2.8k pre prox or like without the prox of like devotions or like potions um it's it's definitely enough 2.8k it's like the highest that i ever go for before the prox um, when it comes to the HP, it's about like 14,000 that I want to be at the very least. So when I reach those two values, I can definitely look into more cunning for more offensive ability. And if I, if, if my, you know, offensive ability isn't necessarily incredibly high, I should not necessarily give anything into spirit as long as I'm capable of like, you know, equipping the accessory. Um, that's, that's pretty much like how I deal with uh, attributes as well, but... It's definitely possible for you to end up like giving a little bit more spirit if you would like to have like a little bit more you know magical damage um or like duration damage is such a thing uh there are unique cases where you can actually like make your character deal more damage uh compared to giving cunning in spirits if you have stacked really a lot of crit damage and you have stacked um you know a lot of offensive ability at the same time so that like the cunnings and the offensive abilities uh, impacts on your character is going to be very diminished but this is going to be a very rare case uh, trust me on this one so that being said the next thing that we can talk about is like the flat values which is also following the same rule as life steal for some reason in this game life steal has been named three different uh, values i don't really know why it will say life steal and then on an item or a devotion it's going to be saying something along the lines of like attack damage converted to health we're still talking about the same value and then when it comes to the resistance that that's going against it's going to be going against life leech resistance so hear me out it's it's named life leech life steal attack damage convert to 12. i don't really know why but this is the same same thing all of all of them are same so this being said this thing <laughs> let's say uh is working exactly the same uh, when it comes to the rule or like the application um, as, as like the flat damage values. So flat damage values are like ether for four chaos from this. That's a flat damage value. Um, these only utilize when you're attacking with your weapon or when you're attacking with an ability that is scaling of your weapon, such as, you know, force wave 75% weapon damage right now. So it is utilizing my weapon. In this case, it's going to be utilizing, you know, my global life leech, or lifesteal it's also going to be utilizing my flat values as well so this is in the bag as well it's good that like we learned this let's go to the next one let's talk about the armor a little bit in this game uh the armor is very interesting guys i don't think like i've built the scrim tools i think i would like to bring build it actually like give me a second um we'll be talking about armor as well over here why it is very interesting is that it's, it's extremely unique because like it's it has like an average number, but at the same time, it actually has, um, you know, distinctive or like it, it, every single piece has like its own armor as well. So whenever you receive a hit, this, you know, physical hit, because like if you read this, it says the higher your armor rating, the less damage you will be taking from physical attacks. So it's only stopping or, you know, mitigating the physical damage that you're going to be taking. This could be like a range physical, a spell damage physical, or it could be like a melee physical as well, definitely. But this has to be a physical damage. And when this physical damage is landing on you, it's going to be landing, you know, chance to hit a rear most of the time to your chest because it's like 26% of the time or legs 20% of the time or like 12% this will be the arms so you kind of are trying to like get good armor value on every single one of these pieces but there's like a little bit of cheese here if you pay attention there are only like six slots even though there's another slot such as like armor uh from the belt so this is like a global slot guys this global slot is actually adding on top of the other pieces as well every single one of them so this you know 90 armor over here is actually being multiplied by six times actually when it comes to your character and it's not only the belt there are other global slots that you can gain this from as well so for instance you can go to demo and you can go to 
Oh, let's see where we can gain some armor. Not from Dima, perhaps? Let's go to... Um... Hmm. Let's go to Knight's Blade. Let's go to Phantasmal Armor. Right over there, we are going to be gaining armor. I am actually, like, so brain lagging right now. The fact that, like, I couldn't find Demo armor right over here is... Like, this used to give armor, I promise you. <laughs> I'm an old school when it comes to, like, Grim Dawn. I suppose it dropped it at some point. I'm not necessarily sure. I thought it was giving armor all this time. Anyways, like, the Phantasmal armor is going to be giving you global armor, such as, like, your belt as well. So this is going to be basically multiplied by six, kind of. Not necessarily, but... You know, you will get what I'm saying when, when I actually, like, explain this to you. So, look at the armor value of your, uh, you know, chest piece, right? Over here, it's 110 armor, right? But when we mouse over over here, the chest is going to be saying armor rating 324, even though it was 110. Simply because, like, 110 plus 90 makes it 200, and then plus 124, that makes it 324 exactly so these global pieces they would actually like end up adding on top of this as well let's this you know calculate something very easy let's pick pick around number 100 again so it would have to be 324 over here as well 314 sorry because like this one 110 and this one is 100 so it's going to be 10 less than your chest it's just going to be 314 actually for your helm so these like global pieces are going to be incredibly important for the rest of your items guys it's, it's extremely big trust me on this one so because of this reason you want like high armor on every single piece but you if you're like running a low armor character uh you you basically want these like you know global armor pieces coming from our like, devotions as well this is also why i explained it for a long time so so that like you know how to abuse, abuse this by global armor uh, from like your components, your your belt, your devotions, and perhaps your skills, depending on your like uh, class choice, definitely. The next thing that I'm going to be talking about is going to be minus resistance. Resist reduction, I think, is the way that it's... Uh, I think it's, it's resist, reduce targets elemental resistance, for instance, this guy. <laughs> so, um... How does resist reduction work in this game? There are like three different versions that you can take and you should be taking it in every single scenario. Simply because like resist, resist reduction in this game, guys, doesn't necessarily stop when your target is reaching zero. It actually goes to the minus. And the biggest part about this is that like the targets that are like really resistant against you, those are the targets that you really want to reduce their, their resist with, resistances with. And... You know, in the meantime, stuff that are not necessarily so resistant to you, they will be reduced as well for this amount. So you will be that much more stronger against those, you know, already not so resistant targets against you as well. So the game really, really multiplies your damage as long as you can stack this resist reduction. They're like very valuable spells or auras out there that are like capable of giving you minus resistances, such as nice chill. Most of the time you do want to go to the ultimate ranks, even though it's only, you know, minus one extra that you're gaining per click, because like the more that you can have, that much more multiplicative it's going to be. This is definitely, especially if you can go to the minuses, versus your target is going to be multiplicative with your damage. Because he's not resistant and now he's taking that much more damage, basically. He will be taking, if he's at minus 10, he will be taking 10% more damage directly. Um, but if he's resistant, he'll be taking that much less damage. It's literally how it's exp uh, uh, calculated. So, that said, first things first, no matter what type of damage that you're dealing, that's also another reason why you want to be dealing kind of one type of damage or like, you know, a damage and its corresponding damage over time so that like you can focus one type of resist reduction. Um, that out of the way, you want to be getting as much as you can resist reduction when it comes to resist reduction. Most of the time we'll be getting this from like, you know, perhaps our spells, uh, both of the masteries, sometimes one of the masteries. You know, it kind of comes to its synergy as well, you know, while picking up the masteries as well. Kind of want to be getting like the most resist reduction in most cases and then the devotions as well they're incredibly big there are three types of like resist reduction that you can go for guys uh simply explain like this is let's say there's there's a percentage value such as like viper and then there's you know another type you can only have one of these by the way 
the percentage one I mean uh, and then there's going to be uh, another one which is like a flat number such as like 32 okay so this is you know I said like Viper for instance 20% this is you know we can only have one of Viper so Viper wouldn't be able to work together with Hendofultos over here because Hendofultos is like 20% as well but then there's like another flat number over here. Elemental Storm says 32 reduced targets elemental resistances. So Elemental Storm is going to be going ahead and stacking with Viper because it's another value. It's another type of resist reduction. But again, you can only have one flat. So if you have this flat right over here, Elemental Storm, it's not going to be working with something like Raise the Dead because it is 24 reduced targets resistances. It's yet, not, yet another flat number right over there. So it won't be working together. You need to pick only one of those. But, you know, you do need one from that number as well. And then there's going to be another number, you guys. This is the one that is the most common, actually. Some sort of like a minus number percentage. This one, you take as many as you can. So you basically take one of these, you take one of this, and then you take as many of these. This is like the simplest way to explain. explain. And which one is like the biggest one over here? The most, the most impactful is this guy and then this guy. Usually they're about like the same. They work literally the same. Actually, even though this is, this is the same percentage, I don't really know why it says percentage. It's additive. So this guy and this guy is working exactly the same. So in this case, if this was like minus 30%, this I couldn't press zero for some reason. Um, this ends up becoming like 62. Okay, if our target was like 62 resistance, now it has resistance, now it has zero resistance. And then it will be calculating with this guy at the end. Um, let me actually quickly think about like which one goes in first and which one goes in last. Uh, I'm pretty sure Viper is going in last. So the percentage is going to be coming in at the very end. Um, that being said, where are these minus ones, guys? Let's, let's look at those a little bit. So for instance, we are playing some sort of like a um, cold fire saboteur, let's say. You know, we're going to be having like minus elemental resistance coming from our thermite mine. And it is going to be stacking with minus uh, cold resistance that is coming from the nice gel. So... Let's say we have 18 points over here, that is like minus 33, and then we have like 14 points over here, this is like minus 28, so it's going to be making minus 51, I think, uh, you know, cold resistance to our target immediately, and then it will be, you know, calculating the Viper and then the Elemental Storm, yada yada. So these are basically the stuff that I'm going to be covering before jumping into the devotions, even though this video was supposed to be about devotions, right? But trust me, these... I, I definitely would like you to be in the same page when we're talking about devotions and these these mechanics of Grim Dawn, um, you know, you should definitely know before jumping into devotions. So, devotions are like a big, you know, star tree over here that could actually be quite, you know, intimidating when you look at it the first time. It's a new player into Grim Dawn. Um, but trust me, it's not that complicated at the end. Do you, you know, why would I say such a thing? Simply because, like, I don't want to give an example from Path of Exile, but um, there's not so many different things that you can do. Let's put it that way. If you really want to win max, you know, the mechanics that I've just explained, every single character needs to max these things according to them. If you're fire, you want maximum fire minus, you know, resistances. You want fire procs, you know. You want as much offensive ability as you can get while maintaining these. And then you want some sort of like a defensive ability cap, kind of like 2.7k as we mentioned, right? You want kind of like a good armor, you know? Trying to get all these, you really don't have many options that you can do here. You know what I mean? You, it, it comes down to maybe one or two different constellations that you could take. But at the same time, if you're fire, most likely you will try to go for a meteor shower, you know? Unless your character has already an incredible... Uh, screen clear and if you're fire let's say you will most likely be taking minus fire resistance from here you know unless you already have a flat number you will be taking elemental storm and at the same time unless you have a percentage you will most likely be taking viper or you'll be taking hand of ultos if you're missing let's say armor you will probably be going for some flat armor values here and there so this is exactly what i mean when i say 
there's probably not so many different options that you can do. In this video, I'll try to like get you up to speed or like give you some pointers what you could do for your build and what you could search over here in the search bar exactly what you should be typing to like sort of you know um, understand what where you should be building to uh, after watching this video you'll probably not be able to you know exactly pinpoint you know 55 points of devotions i think i'm kind of covering the 55 number now actually like you can see this one the points available um so yeah, you, you probably won't be able to like put the 55 points exactly immediately, but you will at the very least understand like the 40 points that you kind of need. That, that's going to be my aim. Um, there's one thing that I should explain that is kind of like a gimmick, let's say. It's like a small trick to this. Um, some of the dev devotions are like kind of paying for themselves. So what I mean by that is like, you know, extremely simple. Lion over here requires one yellow and then it's going to be paying back three yellow back. So what you could do is like, you know, you could, you know, if you're familiar with ARPG games, there's a lot of min-maxing involved. Uh, this is one of those. You could, you could, you know, bait. I, I, I say bait to this a lot. So you could like bait the lion to open up like this. You could take the lion fully. And then you can now remove this because lion already paid itself. And by utilizing this, you could actually like min-max quite a bit by basically, you know, baiting things. So... There are lots of like stuff that I bait, like such as Magi. Magi requires 10 green. 10 green is a lot of commitment, but it already pays back three. So in this case, it only, you know, only requires seven. So I could like gain seven from someplace. Uh, right over here, I could do it. So right now we have exactly seven green. Magi is not open yet, but you know, if, if we take a full Magi, it's going to be done because it only requires 10. So let's bait it with a Hawk. And then we'll be completing the Magi. And then afterwards, we can remove the Hawk now. You know, even though I wasn't able to take Magi at the start, now I can definitely, you know, go to the same back again. So doing something like this, you know, most of my builds, uh, I, I'm receiving a lot of comments where, where the people are saying, you know, I'm having a hard time getting to your devotions. Like, how do you build this up? Because, like, you, you, you know, I, I cannot complete this. It's like a puzzle. Uh, this is how you do it. And you, you know, when you're following a guide, uh, or like, let's say, somebody else's build in the devotions, what you end up doing is like take it extremely simple. You know, where you're trying to do, where you're trying to go, let's say, and what kind of colors it requires. Just try to get to that color, take that, and then it will probably be paying it back, and then you'll be able to like, you know, respect out. Uh, take your points out of there. So this basing thing is incredibly useful. Jumping into devotions, definitely utilize this uh, when you're building your devotions. Definitely try to like, you know, gain the most out of these. I'm going to be in this, like at this part of my video, I'm going to be, you know, splitting the video into two. One thing that we're going to be talking about is that what sort of devotions do we need while leveling? Okay. Um, most of the time while I'm leveling, it doesn't necessarily require as much minus resistance, for instance. Um, because, like, the games, monsters, in normal, and veteran as well, to be honest, and afterwards elite as well, it doesn't necessarily have that much resistance, especially compared to ultimate. So the game gives you a little bit of time to, like, gain these specific stats. Uh, it, it shouldn't do it, like, right off the bat anyways. So at the start of the game, you know, you could... Can we undo this somehow? Yeah, there we go. At the start of the game, you could definitely use some sort of like a proc for yourself, okay? Uh, but there are some like very honorable mentions here, guys. There are like really good procs or like some stuff that are like really mandatory to take. So for instance, the Kraken is absolutely insane. And in my opinion, it's one of the most valuable devotions out there, uh, but requires you to have a two-hander. So it's either like a melee or a ranged weapon, doesn't matter. But anytime that you end up like playing a two-hander guy, you need to rush for Kraken. That would be like my bread and butter or, or like the first tool that I can mention to you. If you're going to be leveling up with a two-hander, even in the late game, it's so valuable that like that two-hander character will need the Kraken in the late game version of these devotions as well. You would be going for Kraken. As you have talked about like the baiting, this one only requires two blue and five green. You could easily get to this in no time at the start of the game. Uh, another valuable mention from like the procs is that like I really like the Twin Fangs. I extremely like 
uh, Elemental Storm uh, throughout the entire game, to be honest with you. Um, some of the other procs that are like quite nice but kind of falls off is like Falcon Swoop. Uh, I could take it while leveling, but I would definitely drop it later on. Same goes for Tsunami. Um, I would drop it later on, but in the in the early game is good. The same thing can be said for like Flame Torrent as well. I would drop it later on, but early on it's pretty good. Uh, since we're talking about like valuable mentions, we could definitely just talk about like Ghoulish Hunger, extremely good. Uh, inspiration from the Bard's Harp, extremely good. Uh, this one is giving you like some elemental resistance, some elemental damage, some pierce damage. Incredible good proc, especially if it, uh, when it comes to energy regen and fat and flat numbers of offensive and defensive ability. And these numbers are pretty big at any point of the game. And, like no matter if you're leveling or yeah, if you're if you're if you're scared, Turtle Shell is a good proc as well. Definitely, it's going to be saving you from death around like forty percent HP. It's going to be you know granting you an absorb shield which is not terrible at all i usually don't don't use it in my builds but as a new player you could definitely utilize this you can mess around and then respec out of it as well there's one thing that is very important to mention is that you can easily very easily respec out of um devotions guys so what it costs is that like within the game um you can respec in Devil's Crossing right over here, if you did not finish the vanilla game yet, right over here, there's going to be a spirit guide over there. Well, when you finish the game, it's not there anymore. So in my case, it's going to be in the Conclave, and I just recently finished. So this guy is not going to be here. But in vanilla game, he's going to be there, the spirit guide, or she is. And then afterwards, um, when you finish the game, it's either going to be in the Conclave of the Three, or it's going to be inside the Coven's Refuge, basically. It's basically traveling, or... I don't know, it's maybe maybe even a new NPC. I actually didn't pay attention to it. But you can one by one respect from devotions. The price does not increase. Every single time it's going to be asking for a specific iron bits. It's like 100 iron bits or something. Extremely cheap. And it's going to be asking for a single ether crystal. Farming the ether crystal is extremely simple as well, guys, in this game. Uh, you basically go to Warden's Laboratory. And you start walking backwards. This is pretty much it. Uh, you're going to be basically finding a lot of ether crystals like this. All these ether crystals. You go all the way up to uh, the devotion shrine over here. If you would like to reset your game at this point, you could. Or you could go to like Lowest Crossing and walk into uh, the cave. In the cave, you will find some. Another really good place that you could go to, this one might require a good character, is the Immolation. If you're not familiar with the Immolation, I wouldn't suggest going there as a new player, not with a new character. Um, so yeah, like you could, you could definitely easily respec out of Devotions at any point. Even through the late game, actually, there's going to be like a potion available to you guys. Uh, I think it's called Potion of Clarity, I want to say. It respects the entire tree, and I have a lot of those, as you can see. Through through the campaign, you're getting like a couple of these, and then later on, when you start killing Nemesis creatures as well, they're going to be having a chance to drop these as well. It just resets the entire Devotion tree and consumes one potion in the process. Um, So why are you leveling? What do I want, guys? I want... I usually okay. Let's let's assume that like I'm leveling a cold character. I usually want like one cold proc. In that case, it is more often the elemental storm. But if you would like to have like a faster proc, because it would it might it might take a while to get to this, for instance, because it requires you know six green and four purple. You could definitely go for tsunami in that case. You know, it's both cold and lightning. It's going to be a good proc, and then you can respec out of it later on when it's kind of falling off. 100%. Um, if you're fire, you could easily go for flame torrents, or again, you could go for the elemental storm. I usually go for elemental storm, but there's nothing wrong with like going for that first tier one. So these are like the tier one, the crossroads close to the crossroads place, and then tier two, and then tier three, the outer circle, the biggest ones. So this is kind of like one proc that I try to go for, and while going for this proc, you know, taking some uh valuable damage type so if it's like fire we could take like fire percentages we could take like elemental percentages let's say we are fire i write fire damage here they are going to be shining up just like this and i'm going to be checking out you know what what is available to me this is like fire and ether 
I would probably take the Flame Torrent over that one. And then there's obviously going to be Eldritch Fire later on. This is a tiny little bit later on. The proc itself is not necessarily that great, except like the minus resistance. And now, as I've said just before, um, the minus resistance isn't that great at the early game. Uh, because like your minus resistance devotions are going to be low level and at the same time the creature is not going to be you know necessarily necessarily resistant at all you'll be able to destroy it with just like you know numbers alone you don't really need to apply resistance reduction at all so apart from this though like when we are fire damage what else do we need it will kind of depend on the character at this point what kind of like values do we have while leveling we have movement speed right you can check your character's movement speed right over here. The run speed on the second tab, it is capping at 135. Run speed is really good most of the time. At the same time, it's a piece of armor is really good as well. And offensive ability is incredibly nice also. Right over here, you can write offensive ability to see what sort of like things that are shining up. You can check out like crit damage, for instance. What is being crit damage to you? And you can check out like armor as well like this. So what are you trying to do while typing these things? You can check out like movement speed. That is very valuable as well while leveling. Maybe not too much. You know, health, obviously. Another thing that is very valuable. So while you're like searching for these, what are you trying to do? For again, if you're fire damage, what is like the most valuable build up for you? It is probably meteor, right? Right over there. So you will need to basically like decide if you want to commit towards like the meteor build up. The meteor build up build up would be requiring red and green. So again, back to those other things that we were searching. As fire damage, I need the fiend. I need you know witch blade. I probably require the rowan crown. I probably require something like magi as well. Maybe even like phoenix. And uniting all of these things, perhaps I should put some defensive stuff as well while still maintaining the torch. What I have just said, this entire sentence was the entire devotion build for what I, I wanted to do. Let's make this for cold so that like we have another example in our hands. Cold damage, I would like to have some sort of like a proc in my hands at the very start, probably tsunami. Again, since it's elemental, I would like to have elemental storm. Most likely at some point, I would like to have viper as well. Let's try to make this for something else so that it's not elemental damage this time. Let's make it for ether damage, or let's make it for physical damage, actually, since it's like incredibly common. For physical damage, again, I would like to have some proc at the very start, right? So Falcon Swoop is a good proc, even though I'm probably going to be respecking afterwards. In this case, I might not even respec depending on the colors, because like I really like the payment here. The payment is extremely big, extremely big from Falcon Swoop. Swoop, three greens and three purples. And then I would like the, you know, minus resistance is insanely big as well. 32% physical. Then where are we building up? We're possibly building up to Oleron. We're possibly building up to like Azrakal. They are both incredibly good uh, devotions. They're big ones. Maybe the greediest version is taking both of them. At the same time, if you pay attention right over here, this guy is extremely big as well. The Ulzad is going to be giving us flat physical numbers. And... Physical damage multipliers as well at the very end is extremely big. So perhaps while building up to these greedy Azraka and Oleron, make sure to take Ulzad as well. So on top of that, what, what else do I need? I need armor. I need offensive ability, right? I need some crit damage. Perhaps I need some movement speed. So while trying to, you know, build up to these, I would try and take as many of those things that I have mentioned. You know, we could we could definitely build up. Let's let's in fact do it. So this one requires a purple. Let's take our purple right over here. Our build up is going to be twelve purple, eight blue, and some yellow. And this one's like purple and yellow as well. So we are definitely searching for purples over here. The purple for Ulzad is already paid. We need some blue. From the blue, what do we need, guys? I said crit damage. I would like to crit and I would like to I would like to have offensive ability. Some crit damage. Let's have a little bit of movement speed. Very nice. Ulzad is open. Let's take Ulzad. How are we looking right now? <clears throat> we still need a tiny little bit of purple and some yellows too. Right. Let's remove these from the crossroads so that like we know exactly our number. 
we have a little bit of crit damage over here from the harpy but the other values are not so great let's let's take something defensive like something like empty throne which is going to be actually giving me which is going to be ending up giving me a little bit of like stun resistance you know freeze resistance it's at the same time some like unique resistances as well such as like chaos ether uh peers and some defensive ability too which is not not too bad at all i've said that like we need to take the assassin blade also so we need we needed 12 purple and we have 17 in fact almost unlocking the older one we needed seven yellows and we are sitting on four let's take the lion lion isn't too bad in my opinion you could also go for something along the lines of like stag which is physical resistance not too bad at all and you could take like one point into this to unlock the seven yellows which is you know hp from the crossroads guys the little bit of like mention the crossroads um in my opinion from these five nodes only the two is really valuable like I, I i try to not take these you know th this tri triangle right here only like the yellow and the red the five percent hp is in my opinion really valuable the rest is kind of meh in my opinion i try to like avoid taking those so the answer is unlocked and we also have three purple is missing for us let's take something like perhaps toad which is giving us life steal okay Let's take the big boys. So Azraka and the Oleron. If you want, you can take this point as well, definitely the attack speed and the defense ability. This kind of depends on your character's attack speed. It's kind of up to you. But sometimes I, I don't give this, sometimes I go. So from here, guys, this is already like a ridiculously valuable character right here. What do I want to take? It kind of comes down to you. You could take something like just HP that is remaining here and there. Or you could try to make this like a little bit more greedy by seeing like if it's possible to, you know, build up a little bit greed here by, you know, just thinking about it, being smart about things. See if it's like possible to, you know, save a little bit of points here and there so that perhaps you can take something like behemoth from somewhere else perhaps uh so that like you have a proc or something like as i said solemn watcher is very valuable as well because of like the armor values and the reflect damage reduction that you're going to be taking very interesting or as i've just said like you could take uh just like you know percentages hp percentages from here and there most of the people that are actually playing um melee characters especially or like you know uh, hit characters let's say they're ending up taking ghoul as well which is extremely good ghoul 100% chance to proc below 45% hp is giving you crazy amounts of like attack speed physical resistance physical resistance is really big in this game by the way because it's like a secondary defense against physical uh after armor which is extremely big and then you have also um crazy amounts of lifesteal as well 80% lifesteal in fact So this is literally, guys, how I make my devotions all the time. You could do this for every single one of those things out there. You could do it for chaos. You could check out, you know, you could write chaos damage right over here. If you're going to be dealing chaos damage, let's write it for the pets, actually. But just to finalize the chaos, you know, what is pinging here? You look at the stuff that are pinging, especially the tier 3s. And then from there, you try to build there while utilizing the stuff that we have mentioned throughout this video. Armor, movement speed, crit damage, offensive ability. And if you're chaos damage, you know, utilizing as much chaos damage as you can. And the minus resistance is extremely big because there's nothing else you could do. That was the entire point of this video. Telling you what is important when it comes to these stats and when to utilize them so when you're leveling it's not so important to take the minus resistances uh but perhaps you know let's have a good proc in our hands at the early game let's have as much percentage as possible if you are using a two-hander we need to have a kraken there's no other way kraken is just too big incredibly big feel free, free to look at it uh by yourself you know every single two-hander is going to be going for a kraken trust me it's a mistake not to go for it so um yeah like mainly keep it simple 
and make a build for yourself is the key. Uh, from then on, what I can tell you is that, like, personally, what I have always done on my Twitch, on my stream, is that, like, I come up, I theory craft or something, and then obviously, uh, in the chat, somebody's suggesting something, you know, saying, like, why aren't you considering this, why aren't you considering that, you know, all these things united, it kind of ends up and forms into another build if, if I end up saying, oh, you know what, you're up to something. So what you could do personally for yourself is that let's say you're playing a commando or something, you could end up like searching for some like good commando builds and see like what they have done with their devotions. And then I would heavily suggest you to do this after completing your devotions yourself. So that like you, you see what other people are thinking or doing with their with their devotions. This is going to be giving you some sort of sense of like a or or maybe like a comparison basically to see what other people are like valuing and what you have valued yourself and then what you could have like maybe maybe what you could have done while building up to this like specific tier 3 constellation let's say um i think i'm going to be ending the video over here i know it was pretty big i i, I know it was pretty long it's about like 41 minutes right now i think i'm not necessarily sure like if anybody managed to like survive this long into the video but i really hope that it was useful for you and um just to shout out my channel i i, I try to make you know consistent rpg uh, in my youtube channel if you have enjoyed this uh, please subscribe and please leave a like definitely helps i'm also streaming every single day uh rpg content on twitch twitch.tv slash uh drop a follow to me over there as well if you would like to thank you very much for watching guys i'll catch you next time